so today I'm going to show how Sting makes a chord progression. So the the song sampled in Lucid Dreams, um, and then how Nick Mira did his drums for it, or like how he went about them. But mostly it's going to be about the melody because I think the melody is the most important part of that song. It's just an incredibly nice melody, right? All right, so first of all, I'm going to just play this chord progression. Now, this may look incredibly complicated at first sight, but um, it's actually not that complicated. And here's what it sounds like paired with the melody. Right, beautiful stuff there. Um, it just I think it's very similar to the Lucid Dreams melody by Sting, the guy who created the original sample. And so now I'm going to just explain the theory behind this. Basically, to show you, so we're in G right now. To understand this, we're going to move it into A minor. Because A minor has no accidentals in it, right? So here we go into A minor. There are all, everything is part of the scale because they're all, there's no accidentals in there, meaning black notes, um, the flats and sharps, um, except for here, this G sharp. So when I start, most chord progressions, they start on the one here. And what I did is literally, it's an A, A, C, E is the one in A minor. So A, C, E, right? This is a second inversion with a seventh added on the top. This is just adds a little bit more harmony. Right, beautiful. And then here's the, the, the fifth of the chord up there. Then this one looks really muddy, but it's literally just a E, G, B, D chord. Um, e, G, B being the five in A minor. And I added in a few extra harmonies to give it kind of a, it muddies it down a little bit. Um, it makes it it makes it not just sound so whole holistic like if i it's almost a little bit smoother or like not smoother but i, I don't even know it just it adds extra harmony that's all um then here to the sixth of the chord a a b c d e f f is the sixth note in the chord f a c then with the d added on top um I guess it's like a two almost. I mean, we could call this a two, but it's not really a two. Um, the D just adds an extra little bit of spice. It's a like passing tone. Nice, beautiful stuff right there. Then the final chord. This is the toughest one. It's the it is the five again, but it's it's swapped out with instead of it being minor, like E G B is a minor chord that you naturally find in a minor scale. It's a major chord. So we did something called modal interchange. Modal interchange is where you take a chord from a, another scale. So we took the five from A major. We just swap them out with each other, basically. And it creates this nice little chord progression. Really nice, and it works out very well. And so... When we think about chords, I mean, um, I'm not really familiar with Nick Mira's uh, knowledge of music theory, but um, that that's how you can really you can really uh, capitalize off other people who make incredibly good melodies. Um, I mean, the song "Lucid Dreams" is an incredible song, um, and everyone who put effort into that was great. But Sting's melody is just incredible on that, um, and you should you should uh, when sampling, don't blindlessly sample. Like you should you should try to figure out what's going on there so that you can improve on melodies yourself and great now we're on to the drums and everything else so uh, i that melody that i added in was uh here i derived the chords from this from this is what i originally had And you, you can see how that happens, um, how I derived it. Um, oh, shit, that would be bad if I did not change this back. Um, it, and so I just put the chords over that and, and then added in some extra little spice. So uh, let me preview the, the beat really quick.
nice, nice. All right, so basically, um, there's not many complicated things about the drums, but it's it's very smooth and well transitioned. I, um, this isn't perfect. I don't think it's exactly the replication of his style of drums, but for the most part, we're there. First of all, we have the hi hat. Um, I believe in some other one of his videos in the, one of the Genius series. There, they he did this on one of his songs, and I thought that was pretty cool. One of the most unique things I've seen out of him. Um, and I I just had to replicate that. And so what we're doing here is we're literally going to the hi hat, making it look like this, so the holds all the way up. Basically, that means whenever the MIDI is showing, it'll play the note for that long specifically. We could trim that a little bit. Um, then onto the bass, it literally just follows the bass line for the song. Um, right, beautiful. Um, then the kick follows the bass. Right. That's something I see a lot out of him with the, these these rim shots that's just to hit um, on certain beats. Um, you can go watch more of his beats if you want to figure out exactly where they go, but you just got to create a rhythm that feels nice. Um, then as far as the laying out, which I think is one of Nick's uh, Nick Mira's strongest uh, suits, is uh, the way he lays out his beats. So we often see this from him. He'll do a little kickstart here when the beat goes in. Nice little thing. It, it just it prepares everyone for the beat, and it's like mentally you're like, oh shit, this is gonna happen now. Then after um, the melody is done, he's done sampling the melody. He, I, I'm pretty sure in Lucid Dreams they do this a whole bunch of times. They'll like put random effects on the melody just to make it uh, unique for the different sections. And so here's a quick and easy way to completely reverse your melody and just make it sound good. Um, so we went from this. Right. Okay. And then this is the melody after I after I reverse it. It's just a beauty, right? Um. So first you you go to your whatever is in your atmosphere, or wh whatever is in your patch. You click Control A or con Control A, and then for Windows Alt Y, and this literally reverses everything. It's an incredible trick, and then uh, you it reverses everything in the exact way. Um, then you'll go to the pattern, render as an audio clip, drag it in, reverse it, and you'll be all good. And then literally set it up so that the 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 end of it is on the line because that's where the start would be, right? Um, and and it just it turns out really nice and adds extra flair to your song. Um, this is great for for indicating different sections, for adding choruses, for making bridges, whatever you want to do. Um, I added another thing I, I, for for gross beat, and this is just it makes the piano a little bit more livened. Right, beautiful, turns out nicely. Um, and then as far as laying out goes, he'll probably he he does this a lot, I think. Where he does like 16 bars, 22 bars, 32 bars, whatever it may be. And then a little outro, then four of those bars or one quarter of it will be like a little outro segment to transition. Um, and then it goes in and then I, I switched up the melody for this whole part and then ended the song like this. And it just works out really well. You're done. Beautiful.